about it. We're back. For those of you who may just be tuning in, this is uh, for your information. And my guest today, um, not my guest, my co-host today, uh, now and in, in the future, whenever she can make it, uh, Dr. Sharon Clayton. If there are those of you out there who would like to uh, be a part of FYI uh, on any time that we are on, uh, all you need to do is make a call and indicate that you'd like to uh, be on the air or you can come and set in if you would like to do that when FYI is uh, happening. So um, put that on your calendar, remind yourself and when you uh, start talking about all the things that are wrong in life, um, maybe there's more people out there feeling the same way you do and, and if that group of people got together might be able to work towards solutions or at least share uh, what your thoughts are on the things that are worrisome uh, to us. Some are more than, than others, of course, but we, we do want to set the stage and we'll continue through uh, November to say if you're not registered, register. Mm -hmm. uh, if you uh, don't vote, then don't call us if something goes wrong because you, you know, if you didn't use your dime, uh, to, to go and vote, then we really have no right to complain. So uh, any of you who have some views on what's going on politically or what's going on with our um, safety mechanism, mainly our, our military, so many of us have served in the military, uh, Dr. Clayton, without mm -hmm. having any recognition at all. That's and true. have you noticed that even when they do write about uh, what's going on uh, in the service that you would think there were no women serving, wouldn't you? Yeah, yeah, because yeah. Because it's not talked about. There are no shows about them. Yeah. There's nothing that is written about the women who have saved and, I mean, yeah. given their lives. It's given unfortunate lives. that we uh, okay. that we still have people with with blinders on when it comes to the categories of difference in our society. And those people in power are able to enforce one of the research causes for prejudice, and that's birds of a feather flock together. And mm -hmm. so, so if if the media is being controlled by a particular group of people, then they see what they see that are like them, you know. Mm -hmm. And and it's unfortunate because uh, it becomes a uh, kind of. A, uh, an issue in society where women are still thought of as being not as capable and able to do the things mm -hmm. that that they're doing in the military mm -hmm. and uh, so that's that's real unfortunate the other thing too is that's going to probably be a point of contention how many of those men that they have focused these stories on may have been gay mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. but right. uh, they're not going to look at sexuality because they have to keep that a, mm -hmm. a no no too in mm -hmm. the military so those categories are, are going to be there and and I, I would be remiss if I didn't say that uh, there needs to be public uh, acknowledgement of the history of women serving in the military right. as well as the history of of other groups that have been disenfranchised in our society that would include African Americans, Latinos, Native exactly. Americans, yeah. and they've done some things with Natives, you know, in terms of the, the role they played in World War II. But for folks to um, not know that blacks have fought in every war that this country has ever every fought, one. Every and that one women one. have been on the lines mm -hmm. too, you know, mm -hmm. in some kind of capacity, I think that's just, uh, unfortunate and I think to go into this to get this far in the 21st century yeah. and not have those dialogues out there uh, that says something for our society you know and it's something frightening and and it is frightening and I, I can remember uh, again going back to the election and they were everybody you know so happy and you know it was like before you had just set in and everybody was walking on the clouds and mm -hmm. all of that. Mm -hmm. And when we came back down to earth, racism was still here. Oh, absolutely. You know, we thought it had just gone. It was it was promoted in that way to make us think that look at all these changes that are, are taking place. Mm -hmm. And but the reality of it was that as we entered the twenty first century, we brought all of those oh, it followed all of us. that it followed us right in the door. It followed us. Uh, followed us right in the door. And so we have let that go to a certain extent. You don't well, hear people talking about racism. Well, the, the, 
Uh, you know, Lou, even coming into the 20th century, W.B. Du Bois said that the problem of the 20th century would be would the be? problem of the color line. That's right. And, and it's so true. In his little book, he said something about we need to look in a mirror so that we can see what's behind us so that we will know how to go forward. We, we refuse to, I don't know why we refuse to, uh, to look and really be aware of, of our history and, and just simply deal with reality. And maybe it's because that we're better at dealing with fantasy in our society because we create something to, uh, to satisfy ourselves. We create a lot of stories and we create mythologies yes, about people, about events, mm -hmm. and then we repeat those stories and mythologies. Is there a, I think we have mm, a call. Um, you reach that? Yeah. It's already on. Oh, Just, it's on. Oh, oh hello? okay. Caller, hello. 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 I wanted to um, address something that may be trivial as far as some of the other uh, problems that we're having and uh, some of the things that we're focusing on for this campaign. Uh huh. I'm just surprised it hasn't. Uh, well, the Republican Party really used this, and one of, to make a long story short, it's about the comment that was made about uh, Mitt Romney's wife and how she is so disconnected from the American mainstream as far as moms stay at home and everything. Well, I'm a working mother, but I listened to the radio one day, and I don't know if this is true, but this is yes. She has five boys, mm -hmm. a stay-at-home mom, mm -hmm. but she, uh, this was the comment, I'm quoting, but she also had two stay-at-home nannies, a stay-at-home cook, a stay-at-home chef, and a stay-at-home house staff. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, she has a stay-at-home mom, but how many other women have? But I'm just surprised that no one else commented on this, and I don't know how true that is. But maybe along the blogosphere, someone mm -hmm. can find out this information. It's actually, it should be commented on. Yeah, uh, actually, I think on one of the news shows that I watched, uh, they did make a, a comment. I think it was Soledad O'Brien one morning did say that, uh, first of all, let's say that, uh, let's, let's distinguish that work in the home and work outside of the home are equally important. Mm -hmm. You know, one doesn't uh, trump the other. But Soledad did mention that, uh, of course, you can boast of being a stay-at-home mom if you're not doing any work in the home. Mm -hmm. And she did reference the nanny mm -hmm. and things of that nature. They had home support. Uh, I don't think that was the same thing as what most oh, no. mothers are dealing with. But that was no. my comment. I, yeah. have, I have a lot more, but I'm going to take a few. No, it's good Listen, comment. Me. Go ahead. Listen, you're I'm free. The issues and, and I'm enjoying it. Well, you just, if you want to stay with us, do if you have other comments that you'd like to make. I, I can at this time, but I sure wish I could. All right. Uh, keep doing what you're doing. Thank you okay. for calling. Right. You all know, right. um, actually, that with all of that house staff, you know, uh, that's all very political. That uh, that uh, the Romney campaign came back with, well, she's a stay-at-home mom because he has to attract a certain constituency, mm -hmm. uh, and the constituency that he was lacking at the time and still lacking is that of the female or that's right. voter, that's and right. so his wife stepped up. Mm -hmm. to uh, mm -hmm. make the, uh, mm -hmm. the rebuttal mm -hmm. so that uh, she could become, she'll be speaking more probably, so that she can attract that thing. See, we can't let ourselves be tricked. You know, That's it's, right. you know, you can't put a, right. a, 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 what, lipstick on a pig and mm -hmm. call it a model, right. you right. know? <laughs> you can't do it, it's still a pig, you know? <laughs> okay. Well, you know, so, I'm, I'm glad to hear uh, from, from the caller, and, mm -hmm. the, and the phone lines are open. Uh, the number here is 2341441. But I do think that it was uh, somewhat unfair, but anybody should have known <coughs> that this lady had someone helping her. With her now, self can you imagine money? the normal, ordinary mother who would have five children at home and, I mean, you're well, not going to be able to the, take them out so you can get a break because yeah, you don't have yeah, the money. Yeah. And you're not going to be able to bring somebody in well, because yeah. you don't have the money. You're in a different category altogether once, with that. Once again, you see what, what happens with our policies, and this is why we have to look at...
public policy, That's the right. normal five child single stay at home mom would be trying to get some kind of assistance yes, that's uh, right. to help her, either through help her with food or mm -hmm. clothing mm -hmm. or shelter. But the policies that are being advocated are cutting that kind of mom out of the picture. And you see, you this know. kind of foolishness takes our eye off the prize. Yeah, you got to keep your eye on the a prize. Big difference about her having yeah. whatever her staff is. That's, that's right. her business. It's not going to affect us, but we need to look at those policies that will stop absolutely. us from helping our children in that so that we can take care absolutely. of our children, so that we can send them to and school, even, feed them, clothe even, them. Even uh, for a mom with five children and a, and a husband who's working a job that's not earning six figures, you, you know, believe it. that that's family's right. going to need help of some sort, but the policies that are coming aboard. You know, one of the things that helped me, and I hope that it has done me well over the years, one of the books that I read a long time ago was called Mega Trends, hmm. and it was advocating that uh, that you follow trends in the news and not just a spot by spot mm -hmm. story. Mm -hmm. And so, looking at what's on the front page today yeah. that catches your eyes, you've got to be willing to look at page twenty That's tomorrow right. to right. kind of follow it, and then to be able to put those threads together. That was a real helpful uh, book for me in terms of how to follow the news and, and what not to let go. And so all of these little bits and pieces that are coming in, when people have uh, coined the term class warfare, mm -hmm. um, what we have is classism, and let's not be uh, uh, pick any bones about that, just as racism, we have mm -hmm. classism mm -hmm. in this country that's running rampant. And we have people supporting people who support classism, who need not support those people. They're not looking at their own interests. Mm -hmm. They're looking at labels of political parties and saying, well, I can't be a Democrat because, and so they may vote in an opposition to their interests simply because they use the labels or it's been a part of a legacy of their family to belong to this party. But make no, make no mistake, Classism in the United States has always existed too, yes. uh, since the inception. And when you uh, look at the policies that are coming through, I really know that we need to advocate for all of those among us because if we let uh, one person down, we're going to mm -hmm. be letting down an entire nation. And so everybody has to stay above the water. There are no throwaway people mm -hmm. in my in my book, mm -hmm. you know, we don't have throwaway people. We wouldn't have been created to be throwaway, but we're creating a, a society where we have created throwaway people. Yeah. And uh, we're not even afraid to do it. We just do it blatantly and say we will cut off uh, food stamps or whatever. Mm -hmm. We will cut right. welfare. Yeah. We will, so you know, for yeah. the elderly. I mean, wasn't Medicare. there a time in this country where the elder yeah. and uh, babies, young children, Absolutely. that that was at the top of our I, priority I, 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 look, concerning policies and making sure that they were taken that, care of? That's right. That was a priority. That and was in priority. many And in many cultures, it's a priority. Mm -hmm. uh, and I've, obviously, I've wound up in a culture that it's not. So I'm looking for a place that really respects 70 year olds. Yeah, I hear you. you, know, I hear you. I'm going to go there. Yeah. <laughs> and we're going to take a break. Stay with us. We'll be right back. 7,000 high school students drop out every yeah, school Yeah, you know, day. I see this stuff That's of, one of um, crazy shared, and you just, I'm so telling you for the first time, I really believe Hi, I'm Stacey. that Look, we may know, have a class war in tough. these United States and if this foolishness doesn't stop. If it keeps going.